Hello everybody, I'm Griffin Gaming, and this is Depression Quest. Now, I know the title sounds a little odd, but this is a game in which that you go through the life of a, depress a depressed person. Um, it sounds really interesting, actually. So, we're gonna check it out. Depression Quest is a game that deals with living with depression in a very literal way. This game is not meant to be a fun or lighthearted experience. If you are currently suffering from illness and are easily triggered, please be aware that this game uses dark depictions of the people in very dark places. If you are suicidal, please stop playing this game and visit the Suicide Prevention Hotline to talk to someone. Uh, the same thing applies to this video, by the way. If you are suicidal or depressed, please take note, because all these things are true. The goal of this game is twofold. Firstly, we want to illustrate as clearly as possible what depression is like, so that it may be better understood by people without depression. Hopefully, this can be something to spread awareness and fight against the social stigma and misunderstandings that depression sufferers face. Secondly, our hope is that presenting as a real simulation of depression as possible, other sufferers will come to know that they aren't alone, and hopefully derive some measure of comfort from that. It goes without saying, that because of the very nature of depression, it is experienced differently by every person who suffers from it. We aren't trying to say that this is the best, or most, accurate representation. Merely that this is an amalgamation of the experiences of the developers and several people as close to them. Many of the following encounters deal with issues such as therapy, medication, handling a love life, and reaching out to support networks. In reality, less than half of depression sufferers actually seek treatment for reasons such as lack of money, per perceived personal failing, or public stigma. These things were included in order to touch upon as a broad a, as a broad a range as possible, since all these elements can be very important to sufferers of depression, though they will likely not be the experiences of most sufferers. It is important to recognize that not everyone with depression is so lucky. Many people with the illness don't have a lot of luxuries that we have in this game. We've written it in this way so that you can focus specifically on the illness, which comes more and more difficult to deal with as the person who has it less and less well off. This game uses audio as a part of the play experience. We encourage you to play with your sound on. Thank you for playing. So, this sounds like it's going to be really dark, and I'm frankly okay with that. I'd like to take a turn from the uh, very common, light-hearted and happy games that I've been playing so far. See the controls. Okay, let's scroll page, tab... Next, next option. Okay. Okay, let's just check it out. Example option one. Example option one. Shift and tab. Tab, shift and tab. Um, okay. Oh, 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 no, okay. I didn't want to do that. Sorry, everybody. Uh, we're back. Okay. Like to go back. Okay, we're back. Let us begin. It is an early Monday morning. You are a mid-twenties human being. You have a significant other named Alex, who you are rather fond of, that you have been seeing exclusively for the past few months. The rest of your social circle consists of a variety of friends and acquaintances, some of whom met at your day job, which is a little boring, but pays the rent. You'd like to be doing more with your life, as would your parents, but are still in process of figuring out what that means and how you do it. You are also dealing with motivation issues that sometimes make dealing with thing these things very difficult. You feel like it's, this is probably your fault, and on bad days, you can feel inwardly angry and down yourself for being lazy, but you're not quite sure how you can break out of it, or how other people deal with these feelings and seem so very functional. You spend a lot of nights fixating on, on thinking about this, but never seem to do anything about it other than lose sleep. Click on these things real quick, because I think these things go somewhere. Okay. You met Alex through a mutual friend a few months back. The two of you hit it off pretty well that first night. And after a series of initially awkward dates, you finally became a couple, much to your surprise and excitement. Alex is three months younger than you are, and is currently a student at a part -time, with a part-time job and broad social circle. Your relationship consists of a lot of nights in watching Netflix when you've both got time off of work and when she doesn't have classes, with the occasional social outing that she tends to have to talk to you in, into attending. So I guess that means that I am a male in this game. She tries to be understanding when you are in one of your moods, as she puts it. That you are starting to feel like she doesn't understand what it's like for you. This is a source of tension in your relationship, coupled with your reluctance to want, not want to go to college parties. This feeds your worry of not being exciting enough for both of them. That could be a very reasonable fear, I can imagine. Alright, check out Social Circle. 
Your social circle is made up of a few close friends, some of which you've known from high school and some from jobs that you've worked. You've also made various acquaintances through reluctantly going to social events with Alex, and you keep in touch with a few friend of friends that you occasionally run into. You also have several online friends that you talk to regularly that you feel less guarded with possibly due to being com communicating from the safety of behind the keyboard. You enjoy the low commitment of the friendships, since they don't expect very much of you other than to listen and share personal thoughts and experiences. Despite the low commitment, you feel fairly connected with these people and tend to be more honest with them than people you interact with in real life on a day-to-day -day basis. You feel incredibly nervous trying to make a few friends and new friends on your own, and are very good at talking yourself out of going to unfamiliar places or larger social engagements regardless of how much you may actually want to attend. Meeting new people stresses you out to a high degree, and this is something that you wish you could work past. Quick pause here. Um, I don't have depression or anything. I'm not going to say that I have depression, as in any sense of the word, but um, I do, I am familiar with the lack of motivation and the talking yourself out of the going to things that you might enjoy, which is actually um, why it took me so long to start making videos like this. But eventually I, I built the motivation to start, so continuing on. You admit you have a bad habit of flicking on social engagements, even with longtime friends, and are puzzled as to why some days you just can't force yourself to go to see these people that you really do care about. Those that have stuck around long enough to be that close with you understand that this is a thing you sometimes do, and have seemed to more or less accept it even though they chide you for it on occasion. However, you've had friends in the past give up trying to maintain a friendship with you because of this trait, taking your social anxieties as personal slight, or eventually getting tired of trying to track you down all the time. You can feel incredibly guilty about this, but are not quite sure how to change. Alright, uh, I want to go through all of these, but it'd take a while, so I'm just gonna go through. You have a day job which you feel is really nothing special. You started out receiving minimum wage, but have stayed around long enough to be making enough to support yourself. The work is dull and unrewarding, and in most days you feel like about anyone can do it. You have a hard time relating to most of your coworkers, so you mostly keep to yourself and get the work done while you're there. There are one or two people you chat with, so you don't consider yourself close with them. A lot of days lately, you have a really hard time getting in a bed and forcing yourself to go in. You're starting to wonder how long you can keep this up. You'd really like to find another job in your field of interest, but feel like you are underqualified every time you look at online job postings. Sometimes you think about going back to school, but would be unsure how you'd be able to support yourself and wonder if a degree would really help anyway. Uh, now to move on to as would your parents. You're one of the few people who you know of whose parents never got divorced. Same. But you do wonder if they still love each other sometimes. You have an older brother named Malcolm who has moved across the country with his wife to work a high paying job. Every major holiday that you see him at, you feel a bit jealous and lesser and the lesser kid, despite being genuinely happy to see him, you feel very ashamed of Your parents genuinely care about you. This often involves inviting you back to your childhood home for dinner, though your mother thinks you never visit quite enough. But you get the impression they don't fully understand you. They want to see you succeed and don't know why you haven't gone farther in life yet because you are so smart and talented. Anytime you try to talk to them about your motivation issues, they tell you the solution is simply to work harder or want it more. Your father is generally more forgiving of your lack of career path, or their mother seems to think you're too smart to be in the position you're in. You know they love you and that they're not bad people, but you really feel like a big disappointment sometimes. Well, we have a nice setup. We make a decision soon? Uh, ooh, okay, okay, we do. It's an unreasonably warm Wednesday evening. You spent the past several hours at work. The past week or so, you found your job motivation flagging more so than usual. You've been in a fog practically all day today, simply going through the motions without realizing even what you've been doing half the time, and yet seem to be moving at half speed. You're so checked out that when your boss approaches you to tell you that it's dead and you can go home early, it barely registers. What's dead? Oh, whatever. As you walk home, the streets hiss from the recent rainfall. You know that your significant other will be in classes until late. Another couple hours at least. You briefly consider using the serendipitous solitude to catch up on that project that you've been working haphazardly for the past few months. As soon as you think about the work that awaits you at home, you feel like the panic creeping in from the back of your brain, unbidden. 
All you could think about is how incredibly far behind you are, and the amount of work seems nothing less than insurmountable. By the time you arrive home and change out of your uncomfortable work clothes, the stress is weighing down on you like a heavy, wet wool blanket. Your computer seems to be staring, down at you, staring you down from your desk. You want to sit down and work, but the mere thought of trying to work sends your stress levels flying. More than anything, you feel suddenly and absolutely exhausted, and feel a strong desire simply to hide in bed. Okay, so... This is information. You are depressed. Interaction is exhausting, and you are becoming more and more withdrawn. You are not currently seeing a therapist. You are not currently taking medication for depression. So I have to make choices here in this game. Do you order some food, grab a drink, and hunker down for a night of work? Okay, so I can't do that option due to my current state. So I guess that's how that works. Reluctantly sit down at your desk and try to make yourself do something. Turn on the TV, telling yourself you need a quick half hour to unwind from work. Crawl into bed. You're so stressed and overwhelmed you couldn't possibly accomplish anything anyways. I mean, I know that two is going to be the right answer, but I don't want to overwork myself. I'm going to make this episode a little bit longer. I'm trying to make all these a little bit long. Just because this is a really dramatic game, I don't want to cut off at a bad spot. Okay, I'm going to do this one first. I know it might seem like a bad idea, but I'm doing this one. Hello, Netflix. Just a half hour of TV, you tell yourself, absently grasping for the remote. You don't do so much as sit in the couch as sick into it. You turn on the TV and start going through your usual channel routine. After a few seconds of this, you realize you're not really doing much more than thumb calisthenics and absolutely killing time. You check the clock and see that over 20 minutes has already passed since you've sat down. As your self-imposed time limit creeps ever nearer, you become more and more anxious. You stand and walk to the fridge, telling yourself, I'll just make a quick sandwich and get to work after that. Keep a reductor on an empty stomach, right? As you eat, you start pacing around your apartment, heading past your bedroom in the process. You stop in the doorway, as if physically unable to cross the threshold. Familiar waves of exhaustion start racking you as you, f you feel simultaneously tired and panicked. You close your door and head back to the couch. Dang it. It's still early yet, you tell yourself. As long as I get to work in, ha in an hour, I'll have plenty of time to be productive. As you flip channels and let the CSI and Jeopardy reruns wash over you as you sink deeper into the couch, feeling once encroached upon and shielded by being quite literally swallowed up by it. As the second hour draws near, sure enough, you find yourself getting anxious and jittery. You repeat the fridge pace couch process a couple more times before you look at the clock and realize that several hours have passed, and not surprisingly, you've managed to get no work done. <sighs> I feel horrible. You crawl into bed, acu acutely aware of the fact that you have work in the morning, and that any opportunity you had to catch up on your own creative endeavors today was squandered. You're feeling so disgusted with yourself that when Alex calls to talk to you on your way home from class, you simply say that you have a really rough day at work and you're trying to rest up before your shift tomorrow. She says that she understands and wishes you a good night. So you can't help know she sounds slightly disappointed. Oh no, Alex. Okay. My only main goal I'm gonna try to keep is to keep Alex. That's what I that's what I really want. Ironically, the stress of potentially upsetting your partner compounded the stress of not having gotten anything done this evening. And the stress of having to go into work tomorrow. The buzzing of anxiety in your brain melts together with your body's utter physical exhaustion, and you sink into a semi hypnagogic anxious funk. Too tired to try and work, but too anxious to fall asleep for several hours. Um, okay, I don't think anything's changed in the down parts. Okay, and with that, I will inform you that this is the end of episode one. Please join me next time on Depression Quest. Goodbye and thanks for watching.